It's the Brian Lehrer Show. On the- no, it's not. It's the YouTube One Day Show. Welcome back. WNYC, good morning, everyone. And there is so much Monday morning politics to talk about this week from who might really be in trouble after Stormy Daniel's 60 Minutes inter. Always right into the gossip. Why can't you just report the news? View to whether Super Hawk John Bolton, the new national security advisor, might really force a war. But let's begin by offering respect to the countless young Americans who led the country in the March for Our Lives on Saturday with a big rally in. Okay, first, why do they deserve our respect? Simply speaking, people do that every day. Marching, people do that all the time. I, I don't see broadcasts and NPR shows about it. I I don't understand. Why do they deserve our respect? This mob mentality needs to end before it destroys us. Washington and hundreds of others around the country, including around here, not just the big one in Manhattan, but in communities all over our area. Here is, well, if some marches get critiqued for being too amorphous, these were about as focused as you can get. It all added up to one big, very specific ultimatum to members of Congress. Pass an assault weapons ban and a big magazine ban or risk losing your next election. Here's a good... Okay, I have problems with this because people who know nothing about guns are speaking about them as if they know what the fuck they're talking about. That's the problem. People are generally stupid. Good example, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas student Cameron Kasky from the D.C. stage. The people of this country now see past the lies. We've seen this narrative before. For the first time, the corrupt aren't controlling our story. We are. The corrupt are- The corrupt are always controlling the story. They are the ones with the money. They are the ones with the power. They are the ones with the influence. They've always controlled everything from the dawn of time, from kings and queens we are the peasants and you standing up there and parroting what they want you to parrot is them controlling you aren't manipulating the facts we know the truth shooting after you shooting the american the people now a, see we had a tide pod last week and you tell me you know the truth now you know what the new the new crazes i remember this a couple years ago they're snorting condoms you know, the little latex thing you put on to have sex. They're snorting it up their nose, coughing it out of their mouth, except they're choking to death. You know, kids today. Know all about guns, Tide Pods, and now apparently guns. One thing they all have in common, the weapons. The weapons? Politicians either represent the people or get out. The people demand a law banning the sale of assault weapons. The people demand we prohibit the sale of high capacity magazines. The people demand universal background checks. Stand for us or beware, the voters are coming. They'll scream and they'll cheer, woo! You said it, yes, power! It's all bullshit lies. Emma Gonzalez stood silently for the six full minutes. six minutes and 20 seconds yeah. that the shooting You're so went brave. on You're so brave. crying along with many in the crowd in grief for the 17 people who died in the rampage and in determination to see that more be done to prevent future mass killings let's experience that together for just another 20 seconds or so to feel a little bit let's not not the mass shootings and who the victims too often are for far too long these names these black girls and women have been just numbers i'm here to say never again for those girls too preach eight year old preach i'm 11 so shut the fuck up i am here to say that everyone should value those girls too that's right People. Who's saying that no one values these people? Just because you have a podium doesn't mean you can get up there and speak for everyone. Speak for yourself. Speak for what you believe and what what you think should happen. Not what they're paying you to say. And granted, she's an eight-year-old girl, so technically she probably doesn't have much of an opinion on it. But somebody put her up there. Somebody paid for a flight. 
somebody paid for a hotel, um, somebody paid for her security, her armed security. I wonder who that is. Sad that I am too young to have these thoughts on my own. <laughs> yeah, we know you're too young to have these thoughts on your own. People have said that I am a tool of some nameless adult. It's not true. All of my fear and doubt is washed away with that simple statement. It's not true. It's not true. I, I wipe my own ass. I wipe my own ass. My friends and I might still be 11, and we might still be in elementary school, but we know. Correction. We know life isn't equal for everyone, and we know what is right and wrong. We also know that we stand in the shadow of the Capitol, and we know that we have seven short years until we, too, have the right to vote. The indoctrination of an entire generation being perpetuated by media and adults that, for some reason, don't understand how the world works. It is not a happy, fun place. It is a place of death starvation, misery, and war. The, how have we become so decadent? We've forgotten what humanity really is. Yes, we can do great, amazing things. We can build, we can create, we can travel to the stars, or at least to the moon. But we've been killing each other <laughs> for thousands of years. <laughs> Some of the most gruesome acts committed by humans, uh, torture, rape, murder. Think about, oh man, take 10 minutes to just Google torture device. You know, let's, let's do that. Come on, Google. What do we got here? Google, what do we got here? Let's see what comes up. Let's see what comes up with torture devices. Let's see, what, what does Bing have to say? This isn't even cool. List of medieval torch devices. I like this. Oh, I like it when there's images. Images are more fun. Oh, look at these things. This is great. This is what comes out of the mind of humans. Amazing. And just stick them in there with a whole bunch of spikes. I don't even know what these things are. Chairs with needles on it. I'm sure, I'm sure we can find an S&M shop in the city with one of these at least. Man, it's just sick. Just sick. Humanity is sick. We are disturbing. We... It's appalling to think that we've forgotten how cruel and corrupt we can be. Just keep pushing the narrative until it sinks in. And then we'll be at their mercy. We'll be at their control. They will take us. Naomi Wadler of Brooklyn, age 11, as the children took the lead at the March for Our Lives. Now, one of the creative and tough political props was that some people wore what they called Marco Rubio price tags. Did you see these? Like a price How? tag from a store? Do you hear the on smile on his face? Do you hear it? Do you hear, our lives are only worth a dollar five? What is that? About the price of a 762 round? <laughs> yeah, that's about right leave with the price a dollar and five cents which is the amount the nra has spent on rubio's election campaigns divided by the number of children in the state of the of florida freedom isn't free no there's a half to fucking fee and if you don't throw in your buck oh five who Marco Rubio price tags a dollar and five from the NRA per child. So, did they move any politicians to meaningful? Who did this math, by the way? Well, who did this math to divide the the? It, this is stupid. You realize this is stupid. A dollar five per child. Gun control. Well, not Rick Santorum, the former senator from Pennsylvania who dismissed the March for Our Lives on CNN like this. 
How about kids, instead of looking to someone else to solve their problem, do something about maybe taking CPR classes or trying to deal with, with situations that where there is a violent shooter but that you How are they looking at other people to, to... Nice. Forget gun control. To be fair, they are looking at other people. They're looking to the government to control it. And, you know, uh, I saw... Who was it? Was it High Impact? I think it was High Impact. I was watching his YouTube. And uh, he said, uh, do you trust the government? And everybody responds with no. And he says, so why would you want them to have all the guns? That that point right there should should end the conversation. That's it. Why would you give the people you don't trust the power to control you? So yeah, my right trumps your dead. They were like, ban the big magazines, ban the assault weapons. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, um, in, there are... Uh, First of all, I mean, I would say that it isn't simply don't tread on me folks that are raising the Second Amendment. That's as, right. As I'm sure you know, Marco Rubio, other elected officials are, are quick to point to the fact that this is, uh, you know, based on your interpretation, a constitutionally protected uh, right. Uh, but they also are quick to point out that the AR-15 sort of, is, because it is the, frequently the weapon that has been used in these attacks, uh, is, is pointed to as something that is uh, particularly deadly, uh, but there are hunting rifles that can fire at the same rate and use the same ammunition. And, and so there, there are various ways in which, you know, we, we've, we've sort of heard this term gunsplaining emerge, where uh, people who are advocates of policies as they are or for even for looser gun laws uh, will point out ways in which liberals don't understand how guns work or they use the wrong terminology. And that sort of is a common response to say, well, you just don't really get guns, so therefore your view should be either sidelined or suggest that you don't really understand what's going on with this debate. Uh, and that's something we've heard frequently, I think, for politicians like Rubio. Yeah, because I'm not a doctor and, and I don't give out <laughs> medical advice. That, doesn't that, how, that doesn't work in any field. If you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, you don't fucking talk about it. You can give your opinion, but then your opinion stops when you meet fact. When you meet someone who actually understands what the fuck is they're talking about. Well, I mean, if, I don't think he was talking about rocket launchers. He was talking about weapons like the AR-15. Well, I mean, why not? What's the difference? Them? If we're going to go down that rabbit hole with somebody like him, what's the difference between a rocket launcher and an AR-15? And is that really what they want to hang the status quo on, that Americans have to be ready to defend against our own federal government? I like how he said, what's the difference between a rocket launcher and an AR-15? Well, this is, I mean, now we're getting into the to that debate, right? I mean, this is something we heard after Las Vegas as well, and it's an absolutely valid question. It, why is it the rate of fire that these bump stocks were, you know, the bump stocks in Las Vegas increased the rate of fire? The bump stock. All right, let's, let's talk about the bump stock for a second. <sighs> bump stock doesn't change the rate of fire of any weapon. All it does is move the weapon against your finger. So if you hold your finger straight, the weapon itself, the recoil from the weapon, keeps pushing itself against your finger. As long as you're pushing against it, it works. The same can be done with your belt loop. The same that can be done with, uh, what was that other attachment? I can't remember. Yeah, anyway. It, it, the bump stock, <laughs> if, you, if you could press the trigger quick enough, you'd be doing the same thing making sure that many more people were injured and killed and that was something that was targeted after that why is it the rate of fire why is a slightly more uh, rapid fire weapon somehow not acceptable than one that fires slightly slower right i mean these are that that sense of scale is absolutely part of the debate uh and yes you're right that the supreme court has held that you know you can't own a tank so that you can then combat but I federal want agents them. should you need to in the in the future uh but that there is particularly on the right, particularly among Republicans, there is a sense that the AR-15 is something that should be defended. And that is, as you point out, something that the Supreme Court has considered in the past. Let's take a phone call. Hi, Beth yeah. on the Lower East Side. You're on WNYC. Hi, Beth. Hi, Brian. Thanks for taking my call. And I hope I can get through this because I got really choked up when I was talking to your screener. But I just have to say this has been an incredibly long year and just really one that's been very hard as it's slogged on. Not because you have the mental capacity of a child 
You're weak. No emotional stability. Oh, I was getting emotional just talking to your call screener. To really kind of have a sense of hopelessness about where we're going in this country. And I was at the march on Saturday here in New York, and I went with my 15-year-old daughter and several of her friends. And it was the first time in a long time that I really had any sense of hope for the future. I mean, to look at these kids and their determination and, you know, so many of them, had, this is like their first active, you know, stand. I mean, it was just so... I Notice how she said it was their first activist stand. That's telling. That tells me that she's one of those people that'll push and push and annoy. It's like the, the ones standing outside Planned Parenthood with their, with their signs and their crosses. You're mad! The first activist. Oh, every, every Sunday I stand in front of Planned Parenthood and I'll, I'll make sure all these young women know the, the guilt of God. The guilt! they should feel inside oh, I felt so deeply like maybe maybe we will be okay and I I just wanted to say that because it was um, it was really profound thank you what did your daughter say afterwards she was she was very touched she has been we went to the women's March in DC and the women's March here so she's she's so wait a second you went to multiple marches so you had the time and the resources to go to the New York March, then fly or drive down to DC to get a hotel, I would assume, because the drive is pretty long. And and march in both of them. Huh. Ben, she's been to other other demonstrations like this. And I mean even when she was a toddler I was dragging her around. But she Boom. Right there, you see? But she's just a loud voice with nothing behind. There's nothing in her head. There's nothing in, in there. So a crowd starts moving. She goes, ooh, ooh, activism. Let's go. Ah! And she'll scream. She'll do her, Wee! because there's nothing. I guarantee you she was one of those people screaming at the sky for the Trump anniversary. I think she was very touched. I think the the role of the kids in this march really moved her. And I think it, it, it was different than the previous marches because it, it, it was, um, I think it really touched her much more personally than the previous things that we've gone to. Beth, thank you. We're getting sucked in by the camaraderie, by the crowd, by the roar. It's the same thing when you're at a stadium or when a... When when somebody is doing something and you're following, you are a sheep. Kids, weird pitch. Let's have this be our new life. Let's be post-apocalyptic scavengers. Okay. What? Get the game, Morty. Give me your friend. Holy summer for the win. I love post-apocalyptic versions of Earth. Your blood will be my lotion. Hands and little shoulder-mounted dudes where I can see them. I am Hemorrhage. You have removed weak blood from us and made us stronger. We can combine our strength and feast on the weak together. What, what, what in the hell are you saying? They don't have to keep trying to kill us if we join them. They're basically pussies. What is your deal lately? All right, let's get sloppy. Summer! Hold on, I want to try something. <laughs> Kill me, please. Okay, but not because you told me to. Summer! Okay, getting darker. Whoa, that was cool. 